The fourth generation Focusrite Scarlet family just made recording better with upgraded mic preamps, auto gain, clip safe features and more. The fourth generation's powerful new features make them the most value packed audio interfaces yet. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope and without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt
zero. I look at that clock and that thing, usually it's too fast. But this morning it was too slow. And I'm ready to go. How about you? I'm glad you're here today. I know you're glad to be here because God's going to do some great and wonderful things here this morning. Preacher's going to preach this morning. I asked him what he's preaching on. He can't remember what it is, but I think by the time he gets up here, he'll have that down. But there's one thing that I got to thinking about. Uh, I'm saving this deal that you put together some time back because I keep going back to my colors, and I can't remember what they are. But I found a word in here called renovation. Does anybody know what that is? Update and what? Update and renew and make better. Okay. That's what he's going to preach about this morning. Getting updated, renewed, and doing better. Pardon me. And doing better. What a great day, huh? Aren't you glad you're here? Yes. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and thank him that he's here. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are so good. Lord, we thank you for all that you've already done with us this morning, the time that we've had in Bible study, and now the time that we have as we hear your word proclaimed and we sing together the praises to your name. Father, we, we just pray that you'll be with every individual here today. Meet the needs that are, are here. Uh, Lord, each of us know maybe most of our needs but sometimes we don't keep our, in our mind all of those things we need so use your your son this morning to to speak to us the deeper needs of our life so that we can be all that you'd have us to be we thank you for loving us enough to do that in the name of christ we pray amen going to share a couple announcements with you this morning. Uh, next Sunday night is going to be our ministry meeting, so if you're over a ministry, uh, please be prepared to share or give a report on that. Uh, our fall festival is coming up the Sunday night after that. You'll notice on the table over here as you exit, there's some of these laying back there. These are so you can invite uh, someone. So if you have some uh, young kids in your neighborhood, just take a couple of these. See, as they're running around the neighborhood, you can pass them out. Let them know that our fall festival is uh, October 29th from 4 to 6.30. If you want to uh, do the trunk or treat, it is a Bible theme this year, so uh, you can see Miss Sharon if you want to do that. Uh, she also needs some help working games, uh, so if you want to help work games, you can also sign up through Miss Sharon. Also coming up on Veterans Day, which is Thursday, November the 9th, we're having uh, an opportunity to invite guests uh, and come and honor our veterans. On the Visitor Center up front, there's also a flyer for that as well, so you can pick these up at the Visitor Center, not right here at the table, but at the very front at the end of the hallway. These are so you can pass out. This isn't just a church-wide event. It's a, it's a, a community-wide event. So you can pass these out. If you know a veteran, you can invite the veteran, invite their families, but we, so we can honor our veterans here in Dothan as well. Uh, also, we have our Bible studies going on on Tuesday mornings. The men meet at 7.30. The women meet at 10 a.m. And our, just a reminder for our shoebox this month, uh, coloring books, Dollar Tree items, small games, glue sticks, erasers, and things like that. So if you're wanting to give to OCC, and start helping us pack boxes, you can bring those items in as well. We're going to have a time of fellowship, but before we do, oh, Miss Sharon, come on up. Well, good morning. Y'all look wonderful. I don't get to see y'all very often because I'm usually in the back with the kids, which is wonderful. But I wanted to let you know what the Lord laid on my heart about the information about the fall festival. This is a fall festival and a celebration of Christ, our Lord and Savior. It's not about trick or treat, that we're going to have trunk or treats, but it's mostly for us to have the opportunity to tell all the children that come about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this year, the Lord laid on my heart to put him first in everything we're doing, in the fellowship, in the fun, and in everything. So I'm going to say, uh, read something out of the word of God that the Lord laid on my heart. And then please pray for us and pray for the Lord. Like Donnie said, these are on the tables. 
ask the Lord, who, Lord, do you want me to invite to the fall festival that needs Jesus? And then be praying for that person because unless the Holy Spirit draws people, it doesn't matter what we do, y'all. We cannot put Jesus in somebody's heart. That's the Holy Spirit's job. So y'all pray for whoever the Lord asks you. I was at the store a different time this week, and the Lord laid on my heart, invite this mom with these kids to the fall festival. And every person that I invited said, I know where that church is. It's the house, on, the church on the hill. Mm -hmm. So this is what the Lord commanded me to do with the fall festival. So pray for me and pray for yourself and all the others. It's in Mark 12. Jesus answered him, and you shall have love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the Lord reminded me to remind the children and all of us, this is the Lord's house, and we're to celebrate him first. And if we seek him first, love him first, and put him first, he will draw all people to himself. So let's make sure we're putting him first, and this is his church and his people. So y'all pray for us that we're always doing that, whatever the Lord wants us to do. And thank you for your prayers. We love y'all. And the kids love you, too. You just don't get to see them as much as I do. This is a great ministry opportunity for us. Uh, last year, Brother Bob had a little table set up, and he was able to share the uh, gospel several times last year. And we did have two people come to uh, Christ last year during our fall festival. So it is a great ministry opportunity for us. Uh, before we have a time of fellowship, we do have on your bulletin, you'll notice on the right-hand side, a little perforated edge. This is if we have any honored guests in the room tonight. We don't have visitors here at Heritage Baptist Church. We have honored guests. And it's an opportunity for you to give just us just a little bit of information about you. So if you'll just take a few seconds to fill out this side. When the offering plate comes around, you can drop it in the offering plate. If you're not quite done when the offering plate comes around, that's okay. You can just leave it sitting in your seat, and the ushers will get that after church. So we're going to have a time of fellowship this morning. Uh, so if you haven't spoken to someone around, you see some of those honored guests sitting around, be sure to give them the right hand of uh, fellowship, give them a neck hug if they're huggers, and just tell them it's great to see them in the house of the Lord. Let's have just a moment of fellowship this morning. <laughs> All right, let's all sing together. Here we go. Lord, let your light, light of your face shine on us. Lord, let your light, light of your face shine on us.
but everything that everything that everything that hath breath praise the Lord but everything that everything that everything that hath breath praise the Lord when do we praise him praise you in the morning praise you in the evening Praise you when I'm young and when I'm old. Praise you when I'm laughing. Praise you when I'm dreaming. Praise you every season of the soul. If we could see how much you work, your power, your might, your endless love, then surely we would never cease to pray. to be in the house of the Lord. It really is our really good day. Let us pray. Lord God in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to be here, Lord, to worship you, Lord, to learn more about you, Lord, for the things that you're going to teach us today, Lord God, for the lives that will be changed here today, Lord God, for the lives that will be changed uh, as, as your word spreads through this land, Lord God. I pray for your word to spread through our land, for the truth to be known, Lord God. Lord, uh, as we collect these uh, get, uh, these tithes and offerings, Lord God, we ask you that that be, be uh, would help that would support your kingdom the way that you intended it to be, Lord God. Lord, uh, just ask these blessings in this uh, in, in your name, Lord.
I looked up and he was there. Just right there. Scared us at first. But then again at this point, why were we so surprised? I guess that kind of tells you how frustrating we were to him at times. We'd seen him do so many things. Miracles. Why did we act so shocked? I asked him if I could walk to him. And when did he ever say no to us? Never. Not once. And so I got out of that boat, just hopped out of it like we were on land or something. And I felt the wind. It uh, felt like it just went straight through me. All my confidence just slipped out of the bottom of my feet. You should have heard them when he rode into Jerusalem. I, I can still hear them. Hundreds just lining the streets, chanting it over and over and over and over and over and over. Hosanna in the highest. Salvation has come. And they finally felt it. They finally celebrated him. And I... I already knew him. I knew he's the kind of king who reaches out and pulls you up, even if you have doubts. The one who always comes to help us. The one who always saves you when you call his name. We're going to sing together now, uh, Who You Say I Am. Let's stand together as we sing. lost but he brought me in oh his love for me oh his love for me through the sunset stream oh his free indeed I'm a child of God yes I am free at last he has ransomed me his grace runs deep. While, While I was, was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Through the sunset stream, all is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I Sunset spring, oh, his spring indeed. I'm a child 
doing better today no smoke up here so <laughs> I was most impressed last Sunday with uh, brother buddy uh, the monitor was smoking he was trying to take care of it and direct the choir at the same time uh, that's what you call multitasking uh, hey while I'm looking here uh, we got a little bit better crowd than we had uh, last Sunday. Uh, we actually had uh, 91. That's that's the lowest. Well, I actually had 90 in worship. 91 in Sunday school. Uh, that's the lowest we've had in uh, about two and a half years uh, that we had. I, I guess everybody just determined they were going to be out of town last week. I don't know. But... Um, but somebody, we had 91 in Sunday school and 90 in church. Somebody went home. <laughs> somebody went home. I don't know who it is, but uh, I don't know if we'll ever find that out. But, uh, but that's quite, you know, things like that happen sometimes. Um, this morning, I want you to take your Bibles and uh, turn over to the book of Romans. And uh, we're going to be looking at chapter 8. Well, actually, we're going to be in chapter 8 for a couple weeks. Uh, this is probably one of the richest uh, portions of Scripture that you'll find in Scripture. I mean, there's there's a lot, a lot of preaching material in chapter 8, and uh, we don't want to miss any of this. But Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 11, and uh, if you have found that portion of Scripture, would you stand with me in honor and in reverence to reading God's Word? For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit of, is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who has raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells 
in you. Let's pray. Our Father, we come before you this morning during this portion of the service when we acknowledge how much we need you and how much we need your word. And Father, I pray today that your word will not return void. I pray that it will accomplish what needs to be done in our lives. Father, we, we recognize that we have not arrived, that we don't have it all together, that there's not one of us in here that's perfect. There needs to be change. There needs to be growth. There needs to be transformation in our lives. And I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will move and speak in ways that we understand and draw us to your throne of grace today. But Father, as I kneel before you and your people today, I acknowledge that I'm nothing without you. And the words that I speak mean nothing without your hand on it. And I pray, God, that you will anoint my life. I pray, God, that you would give me the authority to be able to stand in just a moment and proclaim your word. And we pray and we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want everybody to exercise your neck muscles for just a moment, okay? I want everybody to turn your head, and I want you to look in the back on the screen. I want you to see what's under it, okay? That's, that's the good news. The bad news is I can't see it. Y'all keep me posted? Uh, I had a dear, sweet church member this week that in love came and reminded me that uh, it's a little bit harder to sit on these chairs, uh, but I want you to know you're welcome to bring your cushions with you. Uh, some of you brought your pillows with you, which uh, if it works for you, that's quite all right. I'm going to go a little bit step farther this morning. If, if you want to bring your lawn chair, bring it. Uh, as long as you come, uh, it's quite all right. We'll make room for your lawn chair if necessary. But uh, I recognize that it's harder to sit in those chairs. And uh, so uh, I'm going to be a little bit more conscious about uh, uh, you being able to hear what the rear end can endure, okay? So uh, we'll hope to get, to get you out of here a little bit sooner today. But um, well, you can join the choir and get cushion chairs. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't bring them with you down into the congregation. So. Uh, just pull out there. Uh, something else, too. Uh, we want to make sure that our visitors don't feel like they've got to walk all the way across the room to find a seat. Uh, what I need you to do is when you come in, move on over to this side, and let's fill up this side up so that when the visitors come in, uh, they don't have to call over everybody and don't feel like they're uh, making a scene or anything. Will you all do that for me? Say, yes, Brother Jeff. Yes, Brother y'all know you all not going to do that. You know, there, there are many people that hear about, about victory, and about transformation, and the struggle is that sometimes we don't always see that in our lives. And because we don't see the growth and we don't see the transformation and change in our lives, sometimes we get to thinking that maybe that we're not saved. Uh, I'm a proponent of those that believe that, uh, listen, if there's anything that you were know in life, uh, it's whether you're lost or saved or not. Um, but some of you may just feel like there's not enough change in your life. You don't have the hunger for the Lord like you, you should have. And, and uh, we looked last Sunday at uh, Romans chapter 7 when uh, it was being shared there that uh, he didn't know whether uh, he, he knew what the right thing to do was but didn't, didn't seem to have the ability to be able to do it. And we all identify with that. But uh, this morning when we get to this portion of Scripture, uh, the reason for this, Paul says in Romans 8, is because we've, made not, uh, we've not made use of the power of God's Spirit that's available for us. Romans 8 teaches us how you and I are to walk in the Spirit. Now, in Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 11, Paul is really speaking simply. He's speaking directly. 
He says there's two basic groups of people, and we're going to look at that this morning. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've, I've been listening to the news. I've been watching what's happening over in Israel, and um, I know that most everybody is uh, to a degree. And, uh, but, you know, really what's happening is what he's talking about here this morning. There's really just two groups of people. We said, well, preacher, there's Baptists and there's Presbyterians and there's Methodists and, and there's Jews and there's, there's Muslims. There's still only two kinds of people. There's two kinds of people. There is what is called a secular worldview and there's also called a, a biblical worldview. And what we're seeing uh, played out over in Israel and other parts of the world, and even here in the United States, it, there is a battle that's going on between these two worldviews. Those that are led by the sinful nature and those that are led by the Spirit. Now, everyone is either in one group or the other. So this morning, as we're all here, we're either in one group or we're in the other. We're in the other. Now, the first thing that I want you to notice in this scripture this morning is I want you to, to see that those that are led by the sinful nature. Now, to understand what it means to live according to the flesh, I think there's another passage of scripture that we need to look at real quickly. Turn with me over to Philippians, would you? Philippians chapter 3, verse 18. Y'all lazy, y'all just waiting for them to pull it up on the screen. I still like to hear those pages when they turn a little bit. Philippians chapter 3, verse 18 and 19. This is what Paul says. He says, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. Now, let me kind of just summarize for just a few moments uh, what I think uh, the Scripture tells us there of somebody that follows their sinful nature. First of all, you and I need to understand that they're, what their favorite word is. Uh, can anybody imagine what their favorite word is? It's not jihad. It's, it's, it's kind of like, it's I. Not the E-Y-E, but the capital I. That is somebody that has the sinful nature. Listen, their, their favorite word is I. These people measure everything and everything around them by themselves. They're the only ones that matter. They have no other standard for what is right and what is wrong other than what they want or what I want. The person who follows after the sinful nature, they have the uncanny ability to justify their behavior. It is amazing today to just kind of sit back and, and listen and watch and, and uh, hear what people say and how they uh, justify some of the things that are being done today. Uh, I think we need to write a book on that. I, th I think it'd probably be a, a bestseller. But uh, they have all kinds of excuses. Um, instead of lying, they, they just say, well, the truth is in the eye of the beholder. So truth to me is how I see truth. Um, stealing becomes uh, taking what they deserve, taking what they deserve. Uh, immorality is excused by the fact of if it feels good, then it must be right. Not paying taxes ex is excused by uh, uh, my little bit's not going to hurt anything. I'm, I've already paid plenty of taxes. So whatever they can get away with, whatever they can justify, it's okay. Now, Whatever they can get away with uh, is, is really about I, isn't it? It's about self. But here's something else. Here's their state of mind. 
Here's the way their mind operates. Paul tells us to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded is death. These people often don't recognize that they're spiritually dead and they don't understand that every day that they're drifting farther and farther away from God. And these people, they feel like life is great, but the disease called sin is causing them to drift farther and farther away from God. Listen, when I see what's happening around us and you see what's happening in Israel, and you've got in some of the large cities in America where they're having rallies and they're, they're uh, supporting the uh, taking off the heads of uh, Israeli babies and, and that's okay. Uh, we're, we're seeing it played out today. What used to be wrong is, is now right. They have no direction. They don't have any purpose and they don't have any hope for their lives. But also we see their true religion. Now look at verse 8. Because the carnal mind is enmity or hostile against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be so. Uh, so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Now folks, these are some pretty strong words from the apostle here. Most people don't feel that they're hostile toward God. In our day, many people consider themselves to be religious or to be spiritual. Folks, do we understand that you can be religious and lost? You can be spiritual and be going to hell. The problem is that we've replaced the true God with a God of our own imagination. The God of contemporary society is a God that makes no demands from us and only desires that we all get along with one another and that we all have a good time. There's no accountability. There's no sin. There's no judgment. It's as if the God of this modern society is really kind of more like a good luck charm. Than rather than being the ruler of the universe. But the words are even stronger in verse 8. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Paul tells us that not only do these people not submit to God's law, they cannot commit to God's law or support God's law because they don't have the ability. You say, well, what are you talking about, preacher? Some people long to sing. I'm one of those. Some people long to sing, but they don't have an ear for music. Some want to be a great athlete, but they just don't have the talent. They cannot, they will not, and they have no real interest in living for God's glory. So it's in a similar way the non-believer cannot submit to God's law. But here's something else about these type of people. Those who live by the life of the Spirit, there's a difference between them. Now, turn with me over to Galatians just a mo moment. You lazy bunch of people. Galatians chapter 5. You say, well, I've put this one to, to memory already. Okay, I'll buy that. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. You, you know what it is right off the bat. You know that it's a fruit, uh, the fruit of the Spirit. It's where Paul says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law you see when we're living life by the spirit of god we begin to see these characteristics becoming evident in our lives matter of fact i think a, a good exercise for all of us to do 
is write these down. Write all the fruits of the Spirit down and then give yourself uh, on each one of them a 1 through 10. 1 being the worst or the least and 10 being the best or the most. And uh, when, when you write that out, say, look, what kind of, how loving a person am I? You know, most of us, we're going to put up there, I'm, I'm at least a, an 8 or a 9 in there. But, you know, when you get over to some of these other ones, like peace and joy, long-suffering, gentleness, self-control, uh, we might find ourselves more hitting the middle of the, the scale there a little bit. And you know that tells us, it tells us, listen, uh, there still, still needs to be some growth in our lives. Doesn't it tell us that we, we've not arrived, that we don't have it all together? We're not perfect. There's, there's room for us to grow. But when we're living life in that spirit, these characteristics, they begin to be visible in our lives. And in short, we can say uh, every day when we're growing in the Lord, we, we're going to see these fruits even more. And it's obvious that some people are much more ungodly than others. And others seem to walk more closely with the Spirit than other people. But this being said, there are still only two kinds of people. Those who are in love with the sinful nature and those that are in love with with the Spirit of God. And that's basically where we find ourselves today. Listen, it doesn't take rocket science. You don't have to have so many degrees that they call you Dr. Fahrenheit to understand the difference. There are those that love the world, live for the world, and those that love God and live for God. Those who or in love with the things of God and those that are not. And basically that's where we are. But you see, when the Spirit is in us, when we have the Holy Spirit controlling our lives, listen, we have a, a new world view. Our view on this world, it begins to change. Paul says in verse 5, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. A person's worldview determines many things in our lives. Our worldview, it determines many things in life. It determines what you do. It determines what motivates you. What you consider to be your source of knowledge. Uh, it's your source of authority, your value system. How you view events in life and the trials that may come in your life. The person who lives by the Spirit has a, a Christian worldview. They seek to do not what the world tells them to do, but they do what God tells them to do. They're motivated by a desire deep within their hearts that they want to glorify God in the way that they live their lives. They view the Bible as their authority. The Bible says it, we believe it, and that settles it. Their values are God's values, not the values of the world. And this explains some of the division that is in our country now. A couple of weeks, I'm going to be years old. <laughs> in my lifetime, in my lifetime, I've, I've not seen our nation as divided as it is now. Now, some of you, y'all were back here during the Civil War. And uh, some of you said, well, I, I beg to differ. It, it was pretty divided back then. But listen, in my lifetime, I can just tell you, I, I don't ever remember there being a time that's more divided than it is now. And it shouldn't come as such a big shock, such a, 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 a big uh, thing to us to, to understand this. But listen, we're struggling with having the, the worldview or the Christian view. That's, that's really where this is all about. On one side, you have people who have that secular worldview, and on the other side, you have those that operate from a Christian worldview. You can see why the two groups don't understand each other and how they don't really get along. 
many people who go to church each week. You can come to church. You can say you're religious and be spiritual. But listen, sometimes Christians have, or, or people that are religious have, a secular worldview. And we have to be careful as believers that we don't buy in that too. Uh, it used to be probably uh, 30, 40 years ago that 75, 80% of people in America would be against abortion. And now it's teetering around 50%. Or maybe a little bit, still a little bit more uh, for people that uh, don't believe in it. But we're, we're seeing a decay in our belief system. We're beginning to see a decay in our views today. And, and folks, it's probably not going to get any better. If there's ever been a time in America where we needed revival, isn't that? We need revival in America in the worst way. And listen, we need to be praying for that. Those who walk according to the Spirit, they are the people that have a relationship with God that affects every part of their life. Their faith touches everything that they do. Also, we have a new fulfillment. We have a new satisfaction. What used to be important to us is not important to us anymore. What we used to long for and look for, uh, that's beginning to change. Paul says in verse 6, he says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The spirit-driven person is the one who finds satisfaction in life. They find peace. They have a peace with God because they are forgiven through Jesus Christ. They have peace in the difficult times because they know that God is in control. They tend to have peace with each other because they've come to understand and see uh, people with uh, the eyes of Christ instead of looking at them through our own eyes. The people who walk by the Spirit are vibrantly alive. They see every good thing as a gift from God. They see every situation as an opportunity to be able to honor God, and they enjoy the journey. Do you enjoy the journey this morning? I want to look around. Do you, do you enjoy the journey? Do you? Some of you need to tell your face. Because you, you, you look like you're miserable. Do you see every situation as an opportunity to glorify God? But you see, there's something else that happens. If we're led by the Spirit, we have a new power. We have a new power. Paul tells us there in verse 9 through 11 that if you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then the Holy Spirit is in you. The resurrection power of our Savior is something that is going to rule in our lives. So in closing this morning, in closing this morning, I'm going to make the application of it. What, what does it mean to us? Some of y'all looking at that clock. <laughs> We're reminded that the best tool in evangelism is prayer. One of the best things that we can do for the lost world and lost people today is to pray, to pray for them. If a person cannot understand the things of God apart from the Spirit of God, then listen, all the arguing in the world is not going to change it. We can learn systems. We can memorize arguments. And we can recite all the verses we want. But we will never see a person come to faith unless God first awakens that person's heart by his spirit. So keep praying. That's, that's something we can do. Second is that this passage gives us strength for the journey in life. It is a journey. We're on a journey. Paul has told us that the Holy Spirit lives in those who believe. And later on in the chapter, Paul is going to remind us of several great promises. And we're going to take our time and look at those. For those who have the Spirit of God in them, we'll focus on these promises when we get, get there. But uh, they're, they're awesome. But what I want you to see is this, that finally we're reminded that we should seek 
to set our minds on walking in the Spirit. That we, we want to walk in the Spirit. We want to allow the Holy Spirit to live in us and guide us in our lives. We need to ask God to open our hearts to the leadership of His Spirit. In other words, we really want to be led by God's Spirit. Now, I know that I could ask you that today and get you to look at me and smile and all these things. Well, listen, in your heart, where nobody else can see, God knows your heart. He knows how you'd answer that question. Do you really want God to guide you and lead you by His Spirit in every, every way in life and in everything that you do in life? Do you want Him to lead you? I know I, well, I thought I'd get an amen out of that. But, you know, we, we talk about that. It's easy to, to say that while we're in here, but it's another thing when you pick up your Bible and you go out and you go get in your car and you go home. It's a lot harder thing to do. We want to be led by God's Spirit. We need to ask God to teach us to discern between the whispers of the Spirit in the midst of all the noise that we live in in this world. We need to learn to hear the voice of God's Spirit. God gives commands that we need to seek to obey, and we're told to forgive and seek to forgive. We're told to encourage one another, and we're to work to be an encourager. We're told to seek first the kingdom of God, and we need to make that the goal of everything that we do. God's Word is the blueprint and how we're to live our lives through the Spirit. And listen, it's not just enough to have the blueprint. It's, it's another thing to know the one who created the blueprint. But we also follow the blueprint as we live our lives. So there's really only two kinds of people. There are lost people and there are saved people. There are those that live for the world. And those that are, are led by the Spirit. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me just a moment? I'm glad that God didn't give us x-ray vision that we could see in the deep places of our hearts. But you know what? It doesn't matter whether we can see in those deep places of our hearts. What matters is that God does. God sees in the deep places of our hearts. And He knows whether we're living for the world or living for Him. And He knows whether we're straddling the fence. We think that we can come in and we can be spiritual on Sunday and then Monday through Saturday we live like the devil. Listen, having a relationship with with Jesus Christ and having the Holy Spirit have residence in us, it ought to change us from Sunday to Saturday or Monday to Sunday, whichever calendar you go by. It ought to change everything that we do. And it ought to show up in the way that we live and the fruits of the Spirit ought to be evident. This morning, we always want to give an invitation for somebody to put their faith and trust in Christ, to be saved, to be born again. This morning, if you know you have never done that, you have never trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can make that change right now. And it could be the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart right now, revealing to you that you are lost, that you are living for the world, and that you need Him. I'm going to be down front. Brother Donnie will be here. Brother Bob will be here. If you need to be saved today, listen, don't put it off. Be sure. Know that you know that you know that you're saved. This morning, you may be a believer here, but you're dabbling. you got one leg over in the world, and you got one leg over on the spiritual side. I'm telling you something. That's a miserable place to live for a believer. It's a miserable place to live. Some of us need to recommit ourselves, rededicate ourselves to him afresh and anew. Some of us this morning, God's dealing with in other ways. Maybe God's dealing with you about joining this church, being, being a part of this fellowship. 
We'd love to have you come and put your shoulder to the Lord's work here. Or maybe this morning you've got a burden on your heart and it, you're just going through a difficult time. I know that we don't have the steps that we had in the sanctuary, but listen, uh, right where you are, you can come and kneel down front. Nobody's going to be a, be upset with you for doing that. But if you want to come and kneel and pray, you can do that. You can bring somebody with you to pray. But in these next few moments, I want you to ask yourself, are you carnally minded? Are you living for the world? Are you spiritually minded and living for the Lord? It's, it's one or the other. And if you're straddling it this morning, I pray that the Lord wears you out. I pray that he makes you absolutely miserable in trying to live that kind of life. Brother Buddy's going to lead us in just a moment in an invitation hymn, and we're going to stand and we're going to sing. And if God has spoken to your heart today, you come. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. We thank you for how clearly we see the difference, the worldview. Living for the world or living for Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to every heart and every mind and here this morning and draw us to your throne of grace today. We ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing, and if God has spoken to you today, you come. Come, every soul by sin oppressed, there's mercy with the Lord, and He will surely give you rest by trusting Blessings to be stowed. Plunge now into the crimson flood that washes white as snow. Only trust him, only trust him, only trust him now. He will say. Well, it is October, and in the life of our church, it's a time for us to start looking toward next year. So that means it's budget time. And so uh, starting today, we have the budget forms available for the different ministries to uh, get. And it's basically what it has. It has a history of what your budget for the different ministries have been. And we ask that you meet with your teams or meet with people that's involved in your ministry and, and pray about uh, uh, what God's plan is for us next year. God does not need our plan. We need God's plan. And so you may not be directly involved in filling out one of these budget sheets, but what each and every one of